Hey guys, welcome in and in some cases, welcome back. This is our 31 Days of Prevention series. My name is Marcy Batiste and I am the founder and executive director here at Nine Seconds and I'm glad that you joined me. Um, this is our opportunity to get together to share information, inspiration, and motivation to increase awareness and prevent ongoing and future domestic violence. Um, Nine Seconds is a progressive nonprofit organization. We have a heart-centered mission for domestic violence prevention, and we typically use a pretty non-traditional approach, um, thereby digging down to the root of the cause of the abuse rather than man, or rather than just focusing on the symptoms at the surface. So that's a little bit about us. That's who I am. Um, and tonight's conversation, um, or tonight's topic, I should say, I, I wrote a blog earlier on um, our website at nonseconds.org. And I was asking the question, is Domestic Violence Awareness Month helping or hurting the cause? And I was thinking about it because it almost seems like October is the only time we have this conversation. You know, I, I it sometimes feels like when I'm talking to other survivors and other women um, or even educating businesses about, you know, workplace violence and that sort of thing, it almost seems like nobody wants to have the conversation until October. It's like, oh, you guys have 31 days to talk about this. You better get in everything you have to say. And, it, and I'm, I'm just concerned that we're going to relegate the conversation and silence voices that need to speak up, voices that need to stand up for themselves. Um, we're we're, we're going to silence those voices and, and, and shut away and shut off those stories. You know, one of the things about domestic violence, it's already hard enough to tell your story. It's already hard enough to talk about it. It's already hard enough to have the conversations. Um, because a lot of times you get pushback from other people who are maybe not necessarily informed of, of, of all of the details, or they've created their own opinions about what a domestic violence victim looks like, um, what kind of person you are if you let that happen, what kind of person you are if you don't leave the first time it happens. Um, sometimes you're judged if you go back. And the fact of the matter is, is that most of us go back at least once. On average, they say, the statistic says that it's an average of seven times we go back to the abuser. And the thing of it is, is sometimes even if you don't go back to that same abuser, you pick a new abuser with a new name and a different title and different face. But the behaviors, the characteristics of the individual are all the same. And so that's the concern for me is that, you know, it's almost like we put the feelings of other people before we put forward the feelings of the people who are going through it. You know, conversations about domestic violence are uncomfortable. I get that. I totally get that. Um, as someone who shares my pictures and shares my stories all the time, I get it. I really do. Um, my own family and friends have told me, you know, it makes me really uncomfortable when you share those pictures or, you know, it makes me uncomfortable when I watch your video and you're talking about it or things like that. I get it. I really do. Um, but here's the thing. If I don't say it, who will? If, if we're not willing to speak up and tell the stories and share the experiences, what happens is if once they can silence our voice, domestic violence thrives in darkness. So the best thing we can do for prevention is to shine a big old fat spotlight on it and say, these are what's going on behind closed doors. What happens in this house does not stay in this house anymore. It's it, We have to let it out. We have to shed light on it. And, and, and it thrives and it festers in silence and secrecy and, you know, all of those things. When we, when we shut down the voices of the people who are in these abusive situations and in these abusive relationships, we're basically co-signing the behavior. That's what it amounts to. And I might get some backlash for saying that, but 
here's the thing. I even I saw a post today um, where somebody was talking about, you know, they're tired of if you're if you're not gonna if you're not gonna leave him for good, then don't share, don't don't say nothing about what he's doing, and don't be putting no pictures online and and that sort of thing. And it's just a crock because you you just don't understand what you know. We say all the time here at nine seconds. Our tagline: It's just not that simple. It's not that simple just to say, oh, if somebody did X, so I'm going to, I'm just going to leave and never talk to them again. You got kids, you got marriage, you got joint bank accounts, you got joint real estate a lot of times. There's a lot that's involved. And I'm not suggesting that, that they, that the solution is to not leave because that is not, that is not the solution. Um, we do have to get out. We do, but we have to do it safely. We have to do it wisely. Um, and my fear is that if, we only focus on October 1st through the 31st, like we're doing 31 days of prevention, right? For the month. And this is our, you know, this is our, our big battle cry for awareness. I get it. It's necessary. And I'm glad we do it. I'm glad that it's pushing the conversation to the forefront. And I'm glad it's forcing its way into rooms. And I'm glad it's it's insisting that we have these conversations at the in these uncomfortable spaces. But listen. Domestic violence, awareness, prevention, recovery, all is a 365 day a year conversation. It's an everyday conversation, whether we like it or not. It has to be in the living rooms, in the bedrooms, in the boardrooms, and 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 yeah, and then in the churches. It has to be in all these rooms because that's where the victims are. That's where the abusers are. They're in those rooms. And sometimes the, the people who don't want to hear the conversation the most are the ones that have the most people in the room with them. Not in all cases, but in a lot. You know, it's easy to pretend that somebody's not going through something when it's not put right in your face. But it's hard to say, you know what? I'm just going to pretend that didn't happen. I know I saw you all bloodied and and, and battered and, and whatnot. And I, I get it. I mean, I get both sides, right? I understand why it's frustrating when, when we don't leave. And I understand why it's frustrating when we continue to put up with toxic behaviors and, and abusive um, behaviors. I, I understand it's hard when you love somebody and that's what they're subjected to on a regular basis. I get it. And I, I even, I even will tell you 100% authentically, I understand the judgment. I understand the judgment. I used to judge. I used to judge my mother. I used to judge my mother. I used to think, you know what? You are so weak. Like who would ever do, like, why would you stay with him? Why would you do that? And I lost a lot of respect for her because I was looking at domestic violence through my lens of a child. I was looking at it through the lens of impact on me. I was looking at it through my observation, not with full information, right? So I get the judgment. I understand. But in hindsight, now being what I've being what I've been being through what I've been through, I I see the other side. I see that it's just not that simple. I see why all those times when I asked and begged, please leave, let's please go somewhere, just me and you, let's leave him. I don't want to live like this anymore. And she would always say yes, and then we would never do it. I didn't get it then, and I judged it, but I do get it now. And that is why this is a 365 day a year conversation. Because the more times that we force the conversation, the more rooms that we can put it in, the more living rooms, bedrooms, boardrooms, classrooms that we can get it in, the better. You see, change comes through understanding. It's through education and exposure that change happens. And so if we're gonna if we're gonna be change agents and we're gonna be allies and champions for this cause, we have to ensure that the conversations continue. We can't let the conversation stop on October 31st and say, well, see you next year. We'll be back then. We have to stay engaged. We have to still allow people's voices to be heard. If you have 
if you have a story, you have an experience, don't stay, don't stay quiet. Don't stay silent. Don't hush it. Don't, don't protect everybody around you. If you need to get it out, get it out. Do it. Do it when you feel like it. Do it when it's on your time frame, when you're comfortable. Find a mentor. Find an advocate. Contact one of one a member of my team here at Nine Seconds. Our website, nine seconds.org. Click on contact or click on um advocate. So there's a there's a link that says support advocate. You can send an email directly to one of our advocates here. We'll help you tell the story. We'll help you craft the story. We'll help you think through your story. Sometimes you're not even ready to, to say it publicly. You just need to admit that it's happening and you need to start working on a plan. And that's what we're here for. But that's why these conversations have to be 365 days a year, 366 in leap years. Okay. So that's my message for today, guys. As much as I appreciate Domestic Violence Awareness Month, I just want to make sure that we're not unintentionally silencing voices the other 11 months out of the year. I want to make sure that we have an opportunity for these stories to be told, for these people to get help, for women to have the tools and the resources that they need, ensuring their safety and their health and their success. And the byproduct of that we meet our objective, which is to change the trajectory of domestic violence here in the state of Arizona. So yeah, we got some lofty goals. You trying to shift the atmosphere? You can't do that in 31 days. Can't do it in 31 days. But we're committed to the long game. So that's the message for today, guys. As always, if you hear something, share something. Um, I hope that, that something I said resonated with your spirit. And even if it didn't, please share the video out anyway, because you just don't know who's on your timeline, what word they need to hear, what they're going through. You don't know what's going on behind those closed doors. You don't know what's not being said. And that's why these videos are important. That's why these conversations are important. So let's get this message out to as many living rooms, bedrooms, boardrooms, and classrooms as we possibly can. All right. That's it for me tonight, guys. I hope you have an amazing day tomorrow. Uh, we'll be back with another message in our series. So until then, in, in the meantime and in between time, y'all have a blessed, healthy, safe evening, and we'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Bye-bye.